Doodle bud. It was supposed to stop like that. Anyways, <laughs> we got a Wing Sung 601. Made in China. Oh, you can kind of tell. So, this is a direct competition with the Parker 51 and also the Jinhao 51A. So, you know, the 51s is it's super, whoop. Super great pen and really popular right now because of the relaunch. If you have one, I hope you're enjoying it. Um, you know, if you saw my, people thought it was a review. I said, should I buy one? So it wasn't a review. It was just my thoughts, my decision-making process and whether I should buy the new 51 or not. And I concluded no. That's just my personal choice. But anyways, here's an alternative. We got the 51A. You can watch my comparison I did to those two. Someone mentioned you should check out the Jinhao 601. So I did, about 20 bucks. So I was wondering, someone asked, focus is crazy, come on. Uh, someone said, wow, that 51A is half decent. I wonder what you would get if they made it for 20 bucks instead. So this is kind of the answer to that. Now, apparently, um, again, look up the history online or someone can fill it in the comments. This was going to be made in China. But uh, like Parker commissioned it or something to that effect, things didn't work out too great. The stuff was left there, and lo and behold, you know these pens come onto the market. So you can tell it is mega mega close. <laughs> Their clips a bit longer, uh, but very similar. The the name is below the line on the Parker. It's above the line. This is a luster loy cap. It's a nicer feeling metal than this guy, which is just regular stainless, but it still looks sharp. This is all black. I usually don't go for that, but for this one, I thought, why not? You can also get these with the little ink window, which is handy, but I found it just detracted from the look of the pen. I didn't like how they did the ink window, made it look kind of cheap. Um, but yeah, you're going to see the sucker is very, 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 very close. To the 51 i mean this the okay let's zoom in here this is the part where i'm like i think i think it's the same part look at that side profile like everything it's like it's got to be the same right um both hooded nibs you know same same but different like they're just yeah the the, the feed is different on the parker versus on the wing sung i'm not going to take them all apart um i'm sure there's other videos that does that oh, zoomed in let's zoom out but very very close so if you like this guy you know maybe check this one out or you don't want to drop the money to get a you know a vintage 51 or even the new one it's even more they're still very reasonable this has got the octavian nib so it's not the full gold so it's very reasonably priced but if you still want to save a few bucks, you can go with this guy. Uh, but I will show you, it's still not as good. And that's the thing. We're all trying to find the amazing, perfect pen, mega cheap. And you just get a lesser of a pen. But we're going to talk about it. There's nothing wrong with this pen, though. It's a good pen. For the price, it's very good. But we'll, there's a couple of things I'll show you. So anyhow, this is the, the Vacuumatic. So the one I have here, you can get that in the in the... 51 as well. I have one that I'm in the process of, of trying to repair. Um, so this guy here, so this is a squeeze and suck. This one, good job on that, you know, cap in the back, pretty decent. This is a pump and suck. So one really cool thing actually is uh, you can order them. You can get the replacement uh, vacuum pump here. So it's just a part that just screws right in and comes with the diaphragm and everything and they're really cheap. You can get them like a three pack. So that's pretty awesome actually. You can just buy that all complete. That's a really, really nice feature of this guy. Uh, they do have plastic. Whoops. I was oh, that was going to be dangerous because this is inked and this is <laughs> the feeds like all in here and just surrounded by ink. Um, what was it going to do? Oh, yes. Threads are back here. 
but anyways, threads are here too. But we do have plastic on plastic, so that is nice. These threads are not the best. They're kind of grindy, you know, but whatever. They work. They're, they sh really shouldn't wear out. Um, so that's one thing I like with that wing song over the 51A, which is the metal on plastic. And it's, look at that. Do you see all that? It's just, you know, that's the problem, right? So anyways, so that was good. They put their thinking caps on with the plastic on plastic. Uh, I mean, these caps are interchangeable. Here's the 51 cap fitting on there lovely. So they're, you know, they're so almost identical. But one thing with these threads, so this this is crazy too. This this is a four start thread on plastic. I can just do this, and it's in. Like, look how <laughs> it's so slick. I love that with the Parker. Um, you know, you got to thread it more for this guy. But this is the part here where it kind of drove me a little bit nuts. Now the nib, it's it's not the best. It's kind of scratchy. It could just be mine. It might need a little tweak. I also do find it's a bit skippy. That just could be to do with a misalignment. But this is the part that kind of drove me a little bit nuts. Let me show you this. Okay, so here we are on the cap. Now, it does have, you can see these fins here. Okay, like on the 51. It's got those two. Okay. Okay, right? So how this goes in is it gets inserted and the, the edge actually gets rolled over and they, they clean it up a bit. But when I first got this pen and I first uncapped it, I'm like, oh my gosh, like let's let's get it up to the microphone. Let's see, I don't know how well it's gonna pick it up, but here's the 51. Okay, that little pop noise, that's it capping. I'll try to get this on the microphone. I don't know how successful it will be. 601. I don't know if you got that or not. It it sounds like nails on a chalkboard. Now, if I looked in here, I thought, what is going on? So when I looked in here, you can see there's a scratch pattern going this way. There should not be a scratch pattern going that way. If you look on here, a proper cap, there's none of that going on. All you see are just vertical. It's just on those little springs. Okay, and they also cut a proper relief into it. So see in here, this lighting isn't the best, using the pen. But you see that little slit down there, okay? So that's you're not squeezing it too much. There's a little bit of relief to it. This one, the slit, it's at the very end here somewhere. And it is like, I had to look under a loop, and I don't think it's touching, but like, leave some clearance. You know, leave a half millimeter or a millimeter. It's fine. It's not, there's no load bearing going on. Just come on. Um, so that was, so what I think they did, and you can see there's the weld mark running down there, right? So it's rolled and, and welded together. I don't know what they do with this guy. I didn't see a weld mark anywhere. So I'm not sure if this is formed, if it's a solid piece and they have a, you know, if it's forged, it just gets formed. I'm not sure. It is a better cap, though. Um, but, yeah, so what I think they did is when that was rolled over to keep that in there, they just get in there with a grinder and do that, and it was just god awful. So I had to get in here and just, you know, go back to my good old teenage years and just give her hell. Um, and now you can sort of see that vertical scratch pattern up and down, and that's all that there should be there, but there should not be side to side. So I think that's what happened is they put it in the, you don't do that after the fact because then when I really looked at those fins that are supposed to be springs, they're almost all flat. There should be if, on this guy here, uh, if you can pick it up with the shadow, you can sort of see it if you look at this one, there's a little shadow underneath there. So it's just very faintly rounded to give it that nice spring action. Versus this when they go in there and do that it's sort of just defeating the whole purpose so um, yeah and that's crazy you had you had something to copy so just <laughs> copy it already if you're gonna if you're gonna do that with the whole pen just you know let's finish it off and do it right 
But uh, so that's the only thing here is just the capping uh, is quite unpleasant initially, at least on mine. It just feels like a cat's tongue. Ugh. But uh, maybe as time goes on and we get to know each other and we play more, um, it'll smooth out. But that's the only downfall there. But, you know, if you like this cap better, you can just do that. Did someone just gasp because I put a Parker cap on the wing song? I don't know, but it does feel way better. That's a proper cap. This one is lacking a bit. So, all right. I think I ranted about that long enough. Let's uh, just weigh them just to see how close they are. Then I'll write a little bit with the pen. All right. Wing song is up first. 20 and change. 20.2. Yep, that's pretty damn close, right? So uh, very close. Let's write them and see how they do. So here we go with the writing sample. First up is the Wingsung 601. Sung 601. This has the fine nib on it, and it is definitely a fine nib as far as wetness. You know, it's pretty reasonable. The ink I'm using, this is uh, Graphon Faber Castell Carbon Black. So it, it, you know, let's get you a little closer there. I'll do a little comparison in a moment. So it comes out all right. It's just that the, um, it could just be my nib. It just, especially on circular stuff, it's not very pleasant. I, I checked under a loop. There doesn't seem to be a misalignment. But it's just not the best fine nib uh, for sure. But I'll do over here. And what I think is the closest nib to that would be off my uh, Faber-Castell uh, Emotion. So this is a fine nib as well. I'll just go right side by side here. Let me zoom a tick. And instantly that is much smoother. Again, I'm trying to reach over the camera and have a look here, but you can see they're pretty close to each other for line widths. And I'll finish off. I thought we'd actually have a little lesson today for the writing sample. And I'll do uh, 601 here, the 51A, the Jin Hao, and then the Parker 51 for comparison. But we're going to teach you some Canadian. So there's a word. You mostly hear it out here in BC. It's called skookum. So let me let me use it in a sentence, and you'll get the definition right away. If I threw this pen down, the Visconti Homo sapien, you'd say, "That's a pretty skookum-looking pen, there, bud." That is what skookum means, and you got some bonus Canadian isms in there if you listen closely. So it's just you know, if something is impressive, whoop, nib's wrong. There we go. Something is impressive or pretty sweet. That is how you use skookum. Yeah, now no, I'm actually doing cursive with this nib too. It's and again, it could just be mine, but it's really not that nice. It's it's pretty gritty how she feels. Let's uh, try to wrap this up quickly here without dragging on too long. This is the Jin Hao. 51A. This is also a fine. Robert Oster Fire and Ice is the ink I got. Let's get it over here to get a little closer, just for the comparison. So again, oh, trying to get you in the camera there. Pretty close to the other ones, maybe a touch wider. So if you have a 51A and thought about upgrading to the Wingsung 601, now you know they're pretty close as well. Uh, the Jinhao actually feels a little bit nicer than the Wingsung nib in this particular case. And we'll wrap it up with the Parker 51. Has the same ink as well. This is a fine. This is a little bit of a wider fine. It's sort of, I would say, like a, a medium fine. It is an MF. <laughs> and let's get you up here. 
of all the fine nibs I have, I mean, this Visconti is supposed to be a fine, not even close, uh, but of all the fine nibs I have, this is definitely one of the smoothest, especially for a non for a non gold. It's definitely the smoothest, but you can't see without me bumping too much. It is a little bit. It's the widest of the bunch, just a touch wider than most finds. And let's finish up. How does it do with Skookum? Pretty Skookum. It's got a nice balance to it as well for wetness. So, um, so there we go little comparison I want to know more about this pen as well uh, for, like for 20 bucks for other pens that I have in that range which isn't a ton um, this is it's a pretty good pen I have played with this more with the cap whole thing uh, it it is a lot better when I first got it because it was just you know just grindy grindy getting it in there it is slowly getting better but uh, yeah I think you just got to work it and let me know if you've had that same experience. I did a whole bunch of that and I wiped this off and I would see there would be some metal dust, some goo on there from doing that. But other than the cap thing that you, I ranted about for four or five minutes, it's, it's pretty good for 20 bucks. Decent. The nib, um, you know, it's not that great as far as how it, it feels. It, it's, it is strange because it does lay down a reasonable amount of ink does a good job of that it's just you just see on some of the strokes there it just seems like it just doesn't quite catch you know, especially on these guys it's just missing a little bit so it seems like you got ample flow so i don't know if it's just the tines are off again I, I looked just briefly at it so the feel isn't isn't the best but again from pen to pen that can vary but build quality it, it's definitely much better than the 51a of course, not as good as this guy, but if you wanted to know what a $20 version of this was like, there's your answer. So we spun you in. Let's, oh, and it won't focus. Spin you out. That didn't even spin. Oh, fail.